Well, hello there. I've got a special announcement this week before we get started. We have opened up enrollment for the Transformation Reboot Program for the month of October. If you guys feel like you could use some coaching, accountability, and support from an amazing community heading into this holiday season, then head on over to millionpoundmission.com and start your free 10-day trial of the Transformation Reboot Membership. Our next enrollment period won't be until January, so start your 10-day free trial today and set yourself up so that this holiday season, you can lose weight instead of losing your momentum. What's up, podcast fans? This is a very special episode of the Million Pound Mission podcast, where you're going to get to listen in as I do a strategy session with one of my coaching clients for my Transformation Reboot program. The goal of each one of these strategy sessions is to help my client identify, analyze, and prepare ahead for their top transformation danger zones. If you think that you could benefit from a coaching session like this, you can head on over to millionpoundmission.com and check out all of the information on my Transformation Reboot membership. Now, let's dive into the episode. All right, Jen, welcome to your hot seat session. What would you like to focus on this time? You know what? I think I, I'm really feeling like I'm in a pretty good place. Like I'm working out and I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing. The sleep is actually like such a game changer. Um, My biggest thing, I know it's like weird. It's almost like amazing sleep. (laughs) Weird. Um, My biggest thing I think right this minute is because of, um, and it feels like an excuse to me. And so that's what I'm kind of struggling with is that um, I have uh, people living with me my cousin and and her kid are living with me and it's like we're not all on the same page as far as goals and whatnot and so it gets frustrating because it's easy to get knocked off track and so you know finding ways to not get distracted by things that are going on at home yeah so is it kind of a situation where you're doing your healthy eating and then they order pizza type of thing or yep. yeah, okay yep, those types of things so okay and there's snacks all over in the house and it's just i mean all right so i mean we have to look at what we what we can control what we can't right. control you're doing it you're doing them a salad because they're they're living with you so that's good like it's, yep. it's uh and is it, it's your place it is okay yep. okay that's good to know um and so what we, what we can control, you're, you're helping them. So that, that's good. Um, the one thing that we can control is where everybody's putting their food. So like with me, like, you know, my family, we eat healthy, but my kids aren't keto. My wife isn't keto. Uh, I am currently keto. So I have like specific shelves on the refrigerator. Like that's my area. And, and I make sure that I take, since I'm the one kind of making the demands, I take the smallest area and they have the whole rest that I'm also a little bit of an organization freak. So my stuff is like lined up and it's very like pretty to look at and I can find things easily. And the rest is just like random randomness. Uh, uh, So it's uh, funny that you say that because we've literally had a a family fight about this (laughs) because opening doors and stuff falling on me is like, sets me off the team. Yeah. Yeah. So I would recommend something like that. And then like pantry, same thing. Like I've got one shelf, they have five shelves. Like it's just, I take my little space. I can fit all my stuff in there. They don't touch that. I don't mess with their stuff uh, unless it's like dangerous or something like that. Um, But it's like old and moldy. I'm like throwing that out. Uh, So maybe that is a good conversation starter of like, Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna take this shelf. You guys have the whole rest of the refrigerator and I'm gonna do that. And you have the whole, you guys do your thing. I'm just going to keep my stuff there. That way it's just easier for me to find and make it about you. Uh, make it about you, like almost like them doing a favor for you. Like, Hey, I need you to, uh, you know, and like they're helping you out even and not angling it. Like you guys are messy AF and I, <laughs> I can't find like, don't make it about them doing something right. wrong. Make it more about the same conversation. It's more about them assisting you to achieve a goal because like, I just want to keep all my stuff here. That way you guys can have the rest of the shelf or the rest of the pantry uh, to do your thing. And that way I'm not bothering you guys about, you know, stuff falling out and blah, blah, blah. So that's like the type of, that's the way you want to frame the conversation. Um, But then I think it's important to have a conversation that maybe that leads down to, okay, well, here's why I'm doing this and here's why it's important. Uh, You know, and I don't, 
you know, just mentioning things like, you know, we, neither one of us has time to stress out about, you know, fighting about this stuff. And, you know, uh, I enjoy having you guys here and, you know, the, the family and, and all that. So you know, just frame it around a whole lot of positivity. My, Michael Hyatt has a really good uh, technique where he, he, I mean, you've probably heard it a thousand times, like a sandwich technique. So you sandwich the negative, the negative stuff is in the middle and you sandwich it with, with positive stuff or positively framed things. Um, so, you know, thing, uh, just being like, you know, I, I love having you guys here. Uh, I think it's amazing. Uh, I've got a goal where I'm, you know, trying to prepare for my, my black belt test that's coming up. I need to really dial in my nutrition. So what I'm going to do is, you know, just, I'm going to have this one designated shelf on the refrigerator in this drawer. And then I'm going to have this shelf in the pantry. And I'm just going to make that kind of my zone. That way you guys can have the rest. And it's, you know, it's, it's that way I can keep my stuff organized. I don't bother you guys with, with me, you know, getting on your case about anything and then like following it back up with like, you know, again, you know, you guys being here means a lot to me. I love the interaction that we have. So you kind of sandwich it in there. Sure. Um, and, and sometimes it sucks because you just want to yell at them and tell them to quit being idiots. Right. I mean, that's like what we want to do. I'm like, okay, <laughs> being an idiot, you know, the, and then it seems like a lot of times, in these situations, like you ask somebody to do something like, Hey, can we keep the ketchup bottle in this location? And then you will never see it put there ever again. Cause it's like, it's on purpose now that it will never go in that, that zone, the ketchup zone, the proper ketchup zone will not be utilized. Um, but you know, that's, uh, and honestly, the, the four tendencies has kind of like been helpful in this whole situation because she even talks about that, or maybe it was in the podcast where she talked okay. about that. Like, the dishwasher being loaded or, you know, stuff being in its, in its spot. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah. let it go. Let it go. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, understanding your tendency is important, but maybe even have, have them take the test and, and see, so you know what you're dealing with. You could probably guess it though. If you're I'm living. pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. So pretty just sure, you know. You know, working that to your advantage. But then I think sure. overall though, just like over communicate, you, know, you guys are living in the same space. So you have to communicate effectively but again, use that sandwich technique uh, as much as possible. Uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't dive into it when it's like when you're in the heat of that moment of like, you just open the thing and you're pissed because the, the milk fell out of the fridge or whatever, you know, whatever. Um, like set aside some time, maybe send a text message message and be like, Hey, tonight I'd like to do a little, just family you know, strategy session. Uh, I need to get organized with, and make it about you again. Like I need to orga or get organized with some of my goal stuff. I need to tag you in with some help. I got some ideas, you know, let's square away 15 minutes tonight and make it not a big deal. But that way it's like its own separate thing. It's not just because you got pissed or just because they got pissed about something or kind of neutral ground. Uh, there's a really good book called Fierce Conversations. I don't remember the, the author, but she talks about when you need to have a potentially abrasive conversation, you have to find this like island of safety where both parties feel like it's okay to... Like, like almost in this situation, I would frame it as like, nobody's getting kicked out of the house because we're having this conversation. Right, right. But it's safe to have this conversation, <laughs> you know? I've actually taken that course at work. It's a uh, cruise nice. conversations at yeah. work. So yeah. yeah, it's the safety zone. Yeah. yeah. You find the safety zone and and make sure that you've communicated that. Like it's, it's okay that, uh, you know, uh, you guys aren't going to get kicked out because of, you know, you can feel free to say what you need to say. And, and as long as you're willing to accept, you know, what I have to say and, and, you know, we'll, we'll walk away from that right. as, as still friends and, and right. you know, family members. Right. Uh, so I think just thinking along those terms and communicating well, that's, that's what needs to happen. Not ignoring it, let, like ignoring it and letting it build up is not the right move in this situation because then something dumb and little will happen that will just be like the spark that ignites it. And then it's like World War Three. somebody gets kicked out, hurt feelings happen you know, that's, we don't want to go down that road. And then you're to blame. like, it was just a stupid ketchup bottle, but <laughs> they, don't, they don't realize like the 3000 things that led to that, that right, were a right. bigger deal. So, and it's funny because, um, this is actually our second round of living together in this situation. And that happened the first time. And, um, you know, we all kind of readdressed what the situations were and we're like, yeah, we need to. And so I'm, I'm much better about, saying I'm less passive aggressive this time around and not just more aggressive. Yeah. And so I just say things, but, and it's not really that big of a deal. It's just that for me, I know that nutrition is my biggest, my biggest piece of this right now. And it's like, 
and, and I know that no one means to do anything. It's just, it's like almost like you can't breathe type of thing. It's like, yeah. I just need to be able to have, but at the same time, I also recognize that you can't be alone forever either. I mean, like yeah. life would be a lot simpler if you could just have your own space yeah. and do your own thing, but like, that's not, that's not realistic and it's not ideal yeah. either. So yeah. Yeah, yeah that I mean, it helps to just... feel like you're on the same page. That way, your willpower will be a little bit stronger, you know. Yeah. And, you, and I, I love the idea of just some sort of regular family meeting. Like, I feel like more people should do that, my, my own family included, is just like have just, and then that way, it's just a regular thing. Like, maybe it's the, the first Sunday of the month. And right. that way, it's not like, uh-oh, what's she pissed about now thing. It's like, it's just a regular thing that's like, right. it's expected as part of the routine. And everybody can come out, and the kids included, and you know, get, uh, you know, their input heard and have their voice heard and almost like you can incorporate, if you do that, you can layer in like, okay, my one, one, my one ask of the month is this. And everybody gets an ask of the month that we all need to try as long as it's not unreasonable, you know, but maybe you could say, all right, my one ask of the month is that you only order pizza uh, um, uh, you know, every other week or something like, or like the thing that's really like, just, and not take it away, but minimize it. And it's something that, that's doable. And then, but then they can ask you, but you know, whatever, you know, I don't know what, what, right. you know, it's not right. necessarily like a counterpoint, but it's just like everybody gets an ask and then everybody gets to, you know, everybody is agreed that they will try their best and it won't be perfect, but you know, they'll, they'll at least be aware of that ask, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, Maybe something like that, man. Get a little little routine going. That that creates that safety zone, that that island situation, and you walk out of it. Hopefully, everybody feeling better, like they've been heard, and that uh, you know things will get going. I'm gonna. I, I like this idea so much. I'm gonna incorporate it with my own family starting now. It's gonna it's gonna happen. I, I like that idea a lot. You know, everybody gets to be heard. You know, it's it's funny because a friend of mine, just for people with kids. I mean, I don't. I'm not in that situation, but a friend of mine had like six kids, and so they what they did is they had a weekly meeting like that, that became their family auction too. And throughout the week, mom and dad, if they picked up stuff that kids left laying around, cause you can't have stuff laying around when you have that many kids, then they would pick it up and it would go into a box. And on Sunday they auctioned all their stuff back to them uh-huh. and you could earn, you could earn money, money by doing chores <laughs> that you I could use that. to get on your stuff. I love that. I love, I love, I mean, that's a creative way to teach kids lessons yeah, and they know it's gonna happen. I think the big thing with kids is like you have to, like, they need to expect have certain like, and not like random punishment doesn't really go a long right. way. But like, if you can just lay layer on those expectations, like this is expected, and you know what happens if you do, and you know what happens if you don't, your choice, and yep. then consequences are there either way, good or bad. So it always made me laugh because she said that like they would start to get smart about it, and like one of them would buy like her brother's important stuff because you didn't I mean, you weren't just limited to buying your own stuff and then she would like blackmail him with her chores <laughs> to that's get amazing that back so it became kind of a fun a, a I, fun event for the family so uh, along a similar vein i had a client that i thought this was hilarious like i wouldn't recommend this but i thought it was really funny is she grew up in a house where uh, christmas is a big deal and there were like a million kids and the, her parents would wrap empty boxes of pre- like presents though they're, they're, they're just empty. And when kids would start being bad, they would go and grab a present and throw it in the fireplace. But it was one of the empty boxes. Oh, sure. Wasn't? And <laughs> they would just freak, freak out. out and lose <laughs> But so I wouldn't, it just made me think of right. that. It's a funny story. I just wanted to make you smile. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, may- maybe you could do that and be like, listen, people living with me, they're all these <laughs> into the fireplace. <laughs> It goes. It's probably, gone. probably wouldn't work. That, that's anti what we've been talking about the last 15 minutes. Cooperative truth. Yeah. So, I mean, I think just the first domino that we need to, to flick over is just initiating some communication, start setting some boundaries and just some sort of expected safety zone conversations. I think that would be good all the way around. But, be, but also come to the plate being willing to accept their asks and, and you know, I think almost like overly showing up for them to be like, listen, I'm on board with this and you know, I'm not going to fight you just as, just as much as I want you to not fight me. I think that'll be important. Lead by example. Okay. Okay. Right on. All right, my friend, I'm proud of you. You got good mojo going and I'm here to support you. All right. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're someone that has been sucked into that black hole of weight loss, doom, where you lose that weight, you gain it back over and over and over again. I would love to help you out by providing you with some coaching, a rock solid monthly game plan, and I'm going to plug you into an amazing transformation tribe of like-minded people. Head on over to millionpoundmission.com and get all of the information on my Transformation Reboot membership. See you on the next episode.